the creme de la creme of meat-filled pies. I've made pies before, I've made meat before. In my mind, those two things do not go together. My sister and I make tortillas every Christmas. I'm feeling so confident. The trick to making perfect tortillas is twofold. First, the pastry must be delicate and flaky. Second, the rich meat filling must be perfectly cubed, cooked, and seasoned with an aromatic blend of herbs and spices. I rip open the fridge and I see this bounty of game meat. My family and I love to hunt, so it reminds me a lot of home. I have never worked with game in my life. Tortier, it's pie related. I can make a pie crust just by feeling the dough, but it's the meat filling that's really bothering me. Tortier is a dish that was traditionally baked using the lesser cuts of meat. It would be the legs of game birds, the hind of game animals. It is one hefty meal. I'm keeping my pie super traditional. Cinnamon, cloves. Sabrina. Hey, chef. What kinds of meat did you choose? Good old traditional pork and some bison. It makes me happy. It makes me feel like I'm home. <laughs> I know there's a lot at stake for you because you are missing a big event to be here. Yes, sir. Today's a hard cooking day. I'm missing my only sister's wedding. Is that weighing heavy on your mind? Yep. I have to nail this. I'm making this tortillar for her. Well, good luck. Thanks, chef. I gotta make it through. That's all that matters right now. It's very important this stage in the game to make something innovative. What direction are you going, Michael? I'm gonna go with a little bit of like a spicy chili feel. Is that a jalapeno? Yep. Oh, oh. It's gonna be a little bit of a kick. Are you sure you wanna use a jalapeno? Spice, chili, Mexican flavors. These are all up my alley. Feeling the heat. The home cooks are fighting for their lives in a tortillera pressure test that will send at least one of them home. Oh, it smells amazing up here. Key here is those spices. Cinnamon, clove, bay leaf. Make sure you remove that. Nothing worse than biting on a bay leaf. Easy to overspice a tortilla. You put in a pinch, you add a second pinch, those flavors build and build and build, and it's out of control. The pastry is an important part. This will be a bit of an interesting change because I usually do sweet things. You need to have the right thickness of pastry and try and keep it as crisp on the bottom as possible. If you roll that pastry dough too thick, it's going to be raw. There's no such a thing as a good-looking raw pie. No. So in the last few minutes where they've got to decorate, egg wash their pies and get them into the oven because it takes 30 minutes for those tortillas to cook. I don't know what Tammy's doing over there. I'm starting to lose track of time. I haven't actually assembled anything yet. 30 minutes! Your pie needs to be in the oven. If I don't get this tortilla in the oven, I could be going home. Keep watching my pie. I'm like a paranoid parrot. Very important when they're putting the pies in the oven, they're going in the bottom. And then you're going to have this basic little convection happening. That heat's going to wrap around the top, hit the top of the pie, and make that nice and golden brown. Five, four, three, two, one. Pie out! Hands up! I think it looks great. The pastry is beautiful. It's looking nice and flaky, and I'm really happy. That's what I'm talking about. You've all just completed your very first pressure test. And now, it's time to find out how you did. Michael, please bring your tortillera up to the front. I did a bison with sweet peppers, mushrooms, cayenne and chili pepper. It's uh, a man's pie. Not so pretty on the outside, but beautiful on the inside. Crust looks terrific. I like a thicker crust on my tortillera, because then you can really appreciate the flakiness of that pastry. Thank you, chef. So a little hot pepper, chili. I wanted to add a little kick to that. That's an interesting way to personalize a tortillere. The meat itself is cooked really nicely, very moist. But unfortunately, I do find the jalapeno just taking it a little too much with the heat end of things. But all in all, a good tortilla. And the meat is fiery combined with this rustic crust. It all works together. Delicious. Nice work, Michael. Thank you. Everything is riding on this tortillere, and 
I don't know how the filling is inside the pie. So this is a mix of bison meat and applewood smoked bacon. I flavored it with rosemary, sage, thyme, and bay leaf. The crust actually has a bit of cayenne pepper and black pepper in it. I can see that. It's very dense. It means the meat is packed nicely. All these little slits that you made, that released all of the air that got trapped inside. It looks delicious. Very moist, it's glistening inside. Taste that. Does that taste like a pastry chef made it or a savory chef made it? A uh, savory chef? That's right. Great control of the spice and salt. Nothing's overpowering, it's all working in harmony. So it looks great and it tastes even better. Thanks, chef. He's got mad skills. <laughs> Moist, flavorful, very nice. I'm giving up my sister's wedding to be here. Nothing is kicking me out today. Tell me what you put in your tortilla. Bison, pork butt, nutmeg, a little bit of cinnamon. It is lovely and moist, and the seasonings, very subtle. Tastes delicious. Thank you. Great depth of flavor. The crust, perfectly baked. Crispy on the outside, in the center, nice and buttery, flaky. You're choking up, what's going on? I'm just thinking of home. <laughs> well listen, you're missing your sister's wedding. But I think for a massive opportunity. Hey, chef. Really great job. Please go back to your station. I'm not mad at Veronica for giving me the fresh pumpkin because I'm, I'm screwed either way. I don't know my way around pumpkin other than Halloween, so I'm pretty nervous. It's a really difficult fruit to work with. I think it's a fruit, vegetable. What is it? Claudio, what would you do? I would do an incredible soup with lots of cinnamon, cloves, ginger, maybe a little bit of coconut milk. But I would do some pasta, maybe a pumpkin gnocchi, flavored with a little bit of Sichuan pepper. Sounds wonderful. I'm making a pumpkin squash soup. I have some apple, I have some apricot flavoring. I don't know if the flavors are gonna work. I've never cooked in an elimination challenge. I've been pretty lucky with that. I have no idea if this dish is gonna be enough to keep me here. I'm fighting for my life. Wow, there's a lot of activity happening here, Mary. What are you making? I'm making a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue bechamel. I'm not putting potato in there because I want to keep the pumpkin flavor up front. Sounds actually quite ambitious. We'll see. <laughs> you think Veronica gave you uh, a gift? I do think she gave me a gift. OK. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. <sighs> I know pumpkin is very fibrous, so I'm blending that puree like mad. I want to bring out the flavors of pumpkin because that's got to be the star of the show. I look down at my dish and I'm a little worried that it's not very gourmet. It's a pumpkin puree soup flavored with apple, ginger, sage, and uh, pumpkin crostini. Very interesting. All right, let's taste. Wow, I like it. You had the right amount of pumpkin, right amount of stock, and the apple complements it beautifully. You honor the pumpkin, and I like that. Thank you very much, Chef Alan. It's full, it's luxurious, and very fresh tasting. Just looking at the soup, how beautiful and bright that is, how Smooth, that is. Beautiful, beautiful soup. From its color to its taste to its texture. Thank you so much, Chef. This is a pumpkin gnocchi with a blue cheese bechamel and crispy sage. All right, so let me try it. You have the liver. You know, you have the sweetness from the pumpkin in the gnocchi. You have the saltiness coming from the crispy panchanta. And the blue cheese, just that umph. Nothing's overpowering each other. You know, I love 
these little orange gnocchis because when I see them, it reminds me of pumpkin. I'm gonna say, you deliver what we wanted. Thank you, Chef. Definitely what I wanted. <laughs> Thank you. Jacqueline, please bring up your pumpkin dish. The challenge was to honor the pumpkin and I think I've done that in the flavors. I hope it's enough. It's a pumpkin cheesecake with a pumpkin seed crust, blackberry coulis, and a blackberry chantilly cream. You don't look exactly over the moon. Why is that? I think it's a little undercooked in the center. So you think it's uncooked? Let me see. This is top 10. Raw cheesecake can send me home. It's not as bad as you think, but I would say slightly undercooked. Okay. This really tastes like pumpkin. You know what impressed me the most is your crust. I think it's a fantastic idea to make good use of the pumpkin seed. Root vegetable is one of the most common ingredients used in a lot of culture. It is comfort food to almost everyone in this world. Root vegetables, they're actually like really versatile and also very forgiving, which is like everything I like in a food or person, basically. Michael, what would you do? I'm thinking totally vegetarian and almost like a meal soy of these root vegetables. I tell you, sometimes these root vegetables can be very bland. So I would take meat and make a stew. So all that meat flavor will go into that root vegetable, making it more exciting. I would actually make a multi-layered soup using all root vegetables. Three very different options. <laughs> you know what, I'm really excited. <laughs> Come on. There we go. I am making a root vegetable soup. This is actually how I convinced my husband to let me do the cooking. He was known as the good cook, but this was the dish that sealed the deal. It has sweet potato, turnip, celery root, and some golden beets. When blended together, they create like a super root vegetable. Please bring your dish to the front. Oh my God. I can't believe it's happening. I do have what it takes. It's a roasted root vegetable soup. And there's some sunchoke chips, a little bit of crispy pancetta for nuttiness, and pine nuts. It's very, very pretty. I just love what you did with these sunchoke chips and these herbs because it, it looks really earthy. Let's give it a try. Wow. Oh. It is so good. <laughs> it's comforting. It's got good balance of flavors. I got the sweetness from the potatoes. Fantastic job. Yes, <laughs> thank you. So Christy, are you proud of the soup? I am very proud of the soup, yes. You've got the coriander seed. You've got a little bit of chili happening. Yeah. You've definitely showcased to me that you have a really great palate. Thank you. When you pureed the soup, did you add any dairy to it? Yes, I poured heavy cream in there. I would have added actually olive oil to it because that cream right now is masking oh. a lot of the big, bold flavors that you really want to achieve, yeah. right? Yeah. Other than that, it's amazing. Great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> I left my career as an airline customer service agent to come here and do MasterChef Canada, and it's completely worth it. The third and final dish turned the humble root vegetable into an undisputed star. And that dish was made by... Jenny. Yeah! Good job, Jenny. Oh my god, thank you. <laughs> this is Vegetables Five Ways with a balsamic glaze and a parsnip, apple, and yellow beet puree. The plating is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. It really is a discovery of goodies. Great silky smooth puree. The sweet potato? Please maple sweet potato. I guess that gets the kids to eat them, right? Yeah. I put some hot spice on it though. They don't like that at home. But the judge does. <laughs> That's great. How did you go about treating the lotus root? 
I just boiled down some beets and then I pickled it just in the beet juice. It could have sat in that brine just a little bit longer just to give a bit more of an acidic edge. I agree, yeah. But it's still crispy and flavorful. Well done. Thank you, chef. Thank you. Jenny, I like the way you separated the vegetables. I see the winters here. Celery act, Swiss chard, sweet potatoes. On this side, you've got summer root vegetables, radish, beets. You know your vegetables. Sweet potatoes. Hmm. I like the balance, the sweetness. Let me taste the pickles. Good crunch. Got the acidity. I'm seeing a lot of techniques. Wonderful job. Thank you. I'm feeling really proud of myself. Like I belong here, maybe. I love you girls so much. A Canadian harvest is one of the most amazing opportunities any chef could ever ask for. These are so pretty. Look how cute they are. They're little babies. These, like, look at these beautiful little potatoes, though, right? Yeah, and these mushrooms. They've got some wonderful root vegetables. They have forage mushrooms. They have some wonderful game meat like bison and venison. Look at this. Beautiful venison wine. Yeah, that's outstanding. Wow. There's an amazing selection of different proteins that we have to choose from. And we opt for the venison. These beautiful carrots, roasted. We we'll sort of go for like a hunter's meal. You know? Oh yeah, totally elevated. a hunter's meal, yeah. Totally elevated yeah. hunter's meal. The story just makes sense already. Hunter's meal perfectly fits the setting that we're in. I think yeah, this is like a we have the ribeye, so this is the ribeye, yeah. right? I can't be from Alberta and not choose the bison to work with today. Tay is from the West Coast, so we see that scallops are available to us, and we're like, what if we do a surf and turf? Alberta meets BC. Perfect, right? Do you want to go with figs? Figs and red wine. Yeah, figs, okay. red wine, good. You could hear a pin drop in this kitchen. You guys are in the zone. <laughs> You have a lot of vegetable work happening here, right? Yes, chef. Some beautiful chanterelles, really nice rainbow carrots. We're doing some baby red potatoes roasted off in some duck fat. I'm going to be the veg guy, and Barry's going to take care of the meat and the sauce. Let me ask you something here. Are you going to cook the venison in individual portions or as a loin? As a loin. The cook on it's going to be perfect. I've cooked venison a couple of times before. Wow. Keep cooking. Absolutely, chef. All right. Thank you, chef. Thank you. I can cook protein like nobody's business. I need to get the steak seared, I need to sear the scallops, roast the cauliflower, and that's a lot to do. So I'm hoping I can finish my demi-glades in 20 minutes. I'm just gonna add some herbs to it. How about we throw garlic in there? I don't think you should put raw garlic in there right now. I know what I want to put in it, but May disagrees with me. I think I can use some more raw wine to tell, like to be honest with you, some more red wine. I'll do it. I just, honestly, I think it needs some more like herbs and something like a little bit more flavorful than it just. I need to help her. I need to push her in the right direction. Yeah, just add a little bit of that. This? Yeah. I don't know. It's so hard to trust your gut when you have to talk to somebody else about it. Over in the red kitchen, Barry has no doubts about his wine sauce. I think I know more about wine than the average person. I truly believe I'm the right guy to be doing a red wine sauce. Now we're cooking. The wine sauce ties our entire dish together. Barry is nailing it. I wouldn't change a thing right now. The worst thing that could happen is uh, old man Barry has a stroke or something, and uh, I got to do the meat Thanks, and the veggies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still working on this bloody sauce. And I'm thinking, the sauce is not going to win. I'm going to win. Balsamic. Are you sure? A little bit, just a hint. What is that? We'll add a quarter teaspoon at a time. I think we can cut the bitter aftertaste with acid. Just constantly, just keep tasting, keep tasting. The sauce situation is stressing me out. One more quarter. If we don't nail this sauce, we're not going to win this challenge. Now let's see where we're at. Beautiful. It's gold. Absolute relief. I like it. I do too. I like it a lot. Five minutes, you have five minutes left. And yeah, that went by fast. We want to see beautiful plates, 12 of them. There's a lot of moving parts to the blue team and the red team's dish. And there's only two cooks on each team. It's going to be challenging. We're moving. We're moving. Our steaks are cooked nicely. All of our flavors taste really good. Our sauce worked out. I'm so glad we're not putting the scallop on the dish. No surf and turf for us. It is just turf. It's just going to be turf now, but it's still going to be delicious. 
our dish is coming together exactly how we planned. Almost make like a half moon with the mushroom and the two potatoes, right? And then I'll follow in behind with the carrots. I'm really hoping that the families enjoy the meals that we put out for them. We really cooked with our hearts and our flavors are there. The fact that my family's tasting my food, it's crazy. I'm more nervous of our family trying the food than the judges. I have no regrets. This is the most pride that I've felt since I've been here. Very servers are coming. I've been together with my wife for 11 years, and this is the best meal I've ever made her. Take them away. MasterChef Canada families, I think you'll be impressed with how much you've been able to motivate your home cooks today. From the red team, we have a hunter-style dinner. Venison with red wine plum sauce, baby potatoes cooked in duck fat, chanterelle mushrooms, and rainbow carrots. Sounds delicious, huh? And from the blue team, we have grilled ribeye of bison with fig demi-glaze served alongside a truffled potato puree and roasted cauliflower. Let's eat! The families have no idea which dish was cooked by their loved ones and their feedback will help the judges decide the winning team. The one thing that pops out for me on the red team is the vegetables. They are done with so much care, very elevated. The meat, on the other hand, has some challenges. There's two different thicknesses here. You have a thick piece, which is rare, and a thin piece, which is medium. That's not good. It's totally inconsistent. Look at the difference. Do you know, I don't want two layers of doneness on the same plate. I want them to be exactly the same. The sauce, rich, full of flavor, has the right balance, and goes incredibly well with the venison. Now let's move on to the blue team. There's no sea scallop on this plate. We were promised a surf and turf, and we just got turf. I have a feeling that they didn't put it on the plate because it wasn't good enough, and we have told them that from day one. If it's not great, do not put it on a plate. Real potatoes, nice and smooth, it's not lumpy. It's got nice and... That's the money. Yeah. Velvety. The cauliflower is wonderful, it's nutty. It's perfectly roasted, okay? And that's not easy. How is the cook on your bison? Mine is rare, yours is rare. Mine is well done. I do not like my bison cooked this way. I think all things considered, when it comes to the cook on both the venison and that bison, they're pretty even. So how do you feel about the food, families? It's amazing when, when both plates were put in front of us. Uh, the presentation was just magnificent. I thought they were both very well done. Usually the meat is the focus, but it seems that the vegetables almost stole the show. The mashed potato truffles on the blue place is wonderful. Overall, to me, the meat on the red team and that sauce was to die for. I think Andre's got a lot of good stuff going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Andre! Hi, Chef. What did you get? I got caraway seeds, ground cumin, and ground savory. So what are you going to do? So I have cumin and savory going in here with some oxtails. And I'm making uh, panko covered eggplants and a naan with caraway seeds in it. A lot of these spices taste like Indian inspired. And uh, that's what I'm running with. So you got the pressure cooker going, OK? Yes. And that is great when you do spices, because sometimes spices takes a while for it to Go come out. So good idea. Thank you. So Andre. Who's going home today? Roz. <laughs> Come on, man. It's harsh, bro. That's harsh. I'm just kidding. I love Rosine. I mean, somebody has to go home today, but it's definitely not going to be me. Well, I hope so. Thank you, chef. <laughs> you know you're going home, right? Hey, man, if I go home, then you won't be beating the best chef in the kitchen at the finale. <laughs> Come on. Andre is still cooking his oxtail with just five minutes to go. The oxtail has to be very tender. Some heavy hitters down there, man. Somebody yep. huge is going home today. <sighs> Take your time. This is crazy. Two minutes left. Let's go. Hustle, Two hustle. Minutes. Two more minutes. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Final push here. Last bit. Last bit. It smells like campfire. I love it. I love it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up. Great job, guys. For the first time, I feel really confident because I put myself all out on this dish. 
Which McCormick gourmet spices did you use? I used caraway seeds, ground cumin, and ground savory. So that's an uh, eggplant with panko, and we have a caraway seed naan, and the oxtail is stewed with ground cumin and the ground savory. Wow, look at that, it just falls off the bone here. Andre, this is delicious. Wow. The execution of spices, the way you control the heat, the aromas, it's a very humble, authentic dish, the knockout. It tells me that you want to be here. I really do, chef.